Um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Jan. Thanks for the introduction and, and also for the invitation. Um, like many of you, perhaps, uh, this, is, this is indeed my first uh, in real life event uh, for many years. So, <clears throat> so yeah, as uh, Jan mentioned, um, I'm going to talk about uh, digital timber or the way we um, are approaching our efforts at Zadid Architects to understand timber, how to design for it, what are the technologies involved, what are the constraints, etc. So at the outset, I'd like to mention we are not experts in timber, um, but we want to learn. So that is the, the kind of background context in which I'm going to present. So that's why it's, uh, we, we are interested in timber for uh, various reasons, and I will try and explain those. So uh, my own background, like I run a research team at Zadid Architects, um, and uh, I feel very fortunate that we are a small team, like we are about 15 people and Zadid Architects is 500, uh, that it allows us a kind of ringside view uh, of the kitchen of many of these things. Like on the one hand, there's like a lot of professional opportunities afforded by a large company at the heart of, uh, with an innovative profile. Um, and I'm also studying under um, the guidance of Professor Philippe Bloch at ETH in Zurich, um, which uh, provides a kind of scientific background. Um, and also I teach at a, a um, architectural master's degree program called uh, Design Research Lab at, uh, in London. So, um, and, and so many of you might be very familiar with like projects like these um, in, uh, from, from Zadid Architects, but like what I'm gonna talk about is some of the background preoccupations and interests. Like we have a lot of interest in geometry creation and um, not for the just sake of it, but like how you can create it to match certain performance criteria, et cetera. So we have a lot of research interest in computer graphics um, and also similarly first principle approach and interest in robotics and, and robotic making. Uh, and like similarly, uh, a lot of interest in video game worlds like and video game technologies. And I will talk about, uh, uh, we have used these combinations of interests and, and expertise to study previously other material systems like uh, fabric and tensile structures. Uh, we have uh, explored uh, with, with my friend Yele here in the audience, like uh, things related to robotic hot wire cutting and, of foam work. Um, again, uh, aluminum or curved uh, origami and, and it's used in uh, sheet metal manufacturing. Um, and similarly, uh, sheet metal manufacturing and standard aluminum block sections uh, for these complex structures and, and, and a lot of in similar interest in 3D printing with bioplastics. Um, uh, high resolution 3D printing with uh, uh, smaller scale machines, uh, concrete 3D printing. And, and lastly, for the last two, three years, we are exploring similar, bringing similar principles of exploration, collaborative and cumulative knowledge building to, to the idea of timber. And so that is what we are kind of calling digital timber. And that's what I will try and kind of briefly describe our efforts in that space. Um, so over the last 15 years, we have done a lot of these collaborative pavilions and research prototypes uh, pretty much everywhere in the world. Um, what that allows us is like gains us a lot of expertise in supply chain, but also how to design for a specific material system, uh, et cetera. And, and that, what that means is that like when we actually designing and contributing to these large scale projects across the world, like uh, we are already rehearsed a lot of the complexities uh, in smaller scale manageable um, uh, projects. So like since Zahadi passed away in 2016, like we as a small uh, team have contributed to several square, uh, several million square meters. And I believe a large, uh, reason why we're able to do that is like the preceding 15 years of just collaborative engagement with industry and academia and and research. So all of this like uh, is the context in which like we are trying to think of geometry and bringing back the benefits of curvature. Uh, things that used to exist in our built environment like in the churches, in the uh, in the public halls, etc. And, and how we can upgrade that with digital technologies to meet 
21st century requirements, both social and ecological challenges that face the building industry. And, and key principles that we try to explore is less material, more strength through appropriate design of uh, shapes. Uh, we also want to uh, provide new experiences to, to users of buildings uh, because 21st century use cases are very different from like the way buildings were used uh, in the preceding centuries. And also, like we are interested in digital upgrade of, of the building crafts and building trades, not automation, not complete replacement, but like enhancement of, of both design skills and construction skills. So what, what I'm going to talk for the rest of the uh, uh, talk is like efforts that we are trying to do to encourage responsible design. Um, and one of the avenues is indeed through timber, as I said, like we are not experienced with it, but we definitely want to bring it within our repertoire or within our understanding. So first thing we do with like any, any new technology is to build creative capital and we do that through explore, exploration, student-led explorations at the AADRL, uh, which is the Design Research Laboratory in AA. Um, and here, like for example, we are exploring like what, what are the new affordances, what, are, what is possible with like understanding the manufacturing systems and manufacturing assembly line. How does that relate to like the, the new architecture that may be possible? So like so we are trying to explore not automation, but like what what can we get by like looking at the construction processes and also the production processes. So like we are trying to creatively engage with with what is typically known as engineering. Um, so we are trying to 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 kind of inform ourselves and inform like the new generation of designers of of, of these new capacities. Uh, another thing that we do is like try and uh, provide aspirational uh, context to, to educate clients as to the benefits of, of, let's say, a new material system or a new construction system uh, through these kind of proposals, uh, which is ve we find is very, very significant and important to do rather than only talk about like uh, engineering benefits, but we also need to showcase and, um, and make visible uh, these kind of um, other benefits, the spatial benefits and the experiential benefits to, to, uh, to the clients and the end users more specifically. And so this, this is something that we've been doing as a company for the last few years, uh, specifically related to timber and so on. Um, the other thing that we do is like, you know, begin to explore where exactly will you get the most benefit out of like using timber in combination with others, uh, other material systems. For example, in, in a system like this, like can we combine timber for more high value public spaces within a building, whereas we can also have standard steel uh, prefabrication um, for, for the rest of the building, for example. So that's, so that's the other kind of uh, effort that we are undertaking in in in, in our e efforts to uh, explore the use of the material. Um, so like so we are clearly highlighting the combination of like both modular pre-construction with like more custom and and highly valuable spaces within within a residential building, which is obviously the more public, communal facing uh, side of this. Um, we are also trying to undertake like. Uh, participate in research that is going on in like uh, block research group in ETH or like generally um, in the NCCR uh, of the ETH like trying to, which are investing heavily into uh, understanding timber and, di um, and, and, and digital processes associated with timber. Um, and, and one of the things that we also try to research is like why timber fell out of favor. Uh, for example in the UK for, for between 1950 and uh, 75, like timber was in extreme fashion and there was a lot of buildings and a lot of engineering knowledge and also construction specifications um, which was available in the industry. Like, so there was an ecosystem around timber uh, which suddenly fell out of favor. And, and the reason, part of the reason is that it just fell out of fashion and then there was, you know, um, uh, other materials and other things that uh, had its ascendancy. So. So we, we, we believe like, like, you know, that's the cultural side of the social aspects of how do you bring, uh, engage with timber, you need to engage with the, the cultural aspects of it as well. So, so we do a lot of these kind of experiments to in, inform our design team and inform ourselves how we can engage with the material and how we can bring new technologies to, uh, to, to this. So we do make physical prototypes, not 
so that we understand uh, it's, it's our, our way of model making so we can then design and draw these shapes in a more appropriate way. So it's not arbitrarily drawn, it, it, it reflects our understanding of physically making something. And, and so, so we then developed like these tools that allow for us to explore the so-called uh, various uh, variations and possibilities with uh, design with timber. Um, and then subsequently, we also then take it forward and try to bring in more automation and make it available to a wider design team. And we, when we make these proposals in a competition um, pro example, uh, we already know uh, th there are these procedures that we have rehearsed and we can make available to, to, to the wider uh, design team. So, and, and also like there's the easy to use kind of CAD tools that we build in. Um, and, and we can engage with our engineering consultants and engineering collaborators at, at a, a slightly more informed level. Um, so these are all, all the things that we are doing in, in, uh, in, a, in our company as a, as a design company. Uh, as I said, like we're not experts in timber or any other material for that matter. But um, what's happening in industry is like a bit different to, to, to this. Like what's happening from in industry is like they're trying for vertical integration. They're trying for learning from the automotive industry where everything is, you know, singularly owned, like under one, one umbrella company. Um, it's not truly collaborative in that sense. But the AC architecture industry is like is very many partners, um, and and so like so there's a difference there. And and so this idea of learning from the automobile industry is not new to the building industry either. So this has been tried before where you try and design a building as though it's a car. Uh, you limit to 10,000 parts or less, and then you automate the assembly line processes, et cetera. So this, um, and this is what Google tried in, in Toronto uh, with their now famous uh, project um, in the Toronto Keys. And they talked about all of these aspects that they will design with a library of parts and they will know how the, uh, those parts can, uh, kit of parts can be assembled into actual designs. And they also know the supply chain where they will procure the timber from. And then they will also do the big gigafactory that will actually produce all these parts, et cetera. So basically they've been talking about digital uh, design for manufacturing and assembly on the one hand, and they're talking about the digital manufacturing of it already, right? But then they also have like a very traditional process of asking the people what they want, um, which is surveys, questionnaires, planning permissions, so on and so on. Um, and we can see why Google wants to do this. Like, and that is because like the constru construction industry is very uh, lumpy in the sense that 1% of UK's companies in the AEC industry, there are 1 million companies, and just 1% of them are responsible for $75 billion uh, uh, pounds of turnover. So if, if you can disrupt that 1%, like you, you're making, a, there's a lot of business case there, right? So that's, whereas like, on the other hand, there's 99%, uh, which are small, medium businesses. And they're still responsible for a significant amount of revenue, um, but what Google is trying is like not going to work for the, the other 99%, right? Like, um, so that's where we are trying to uh, uh, come in and say, like, what can we do on the other side, which represents a significant portion of the building industry, um, and and also on the on the one hand, the centralized model actually works, uh, like thinking of buildings like as automobiles for that one percent of buildings, but then there is also the, another model that might be required for like the other half of the building industry. And, and we, that's where I'm going to talk about uh, this particular project, or I'll end with this project, uh, which relates, it's a, it's a 10 houses or, um, in, as a pilot project in Honduras, like it's on an island uh, called Roatan. Uh, and it is, uh, we are collaborating with our engineering partners, AKT2, and, and also environmental engineering uh, from Hilson and Moran. So one thing that we are doing already is to, from the ground up, like we don't want to just ship pre-manufactured containers and then put them on site. How can we develop digital design processes that will adapt to both the landscape and the climate, uh, which is usually very difficult to do when you have like pre-manufactured parts like being manufactured in, somewhere in the US. Right, and, and so that's one thing, and, but we are still also incorporating choice, like that how can people customize their homes 
um, and not only the interior but also the exterior shapes of um, so that's so th that means that we have to design for more choice that is actually a lot more work for us as architects so that that's where a lot of our interest in computer graphics and robotic manufacturing really uh, beginning to uh, show its use ca use value so we are designing it as a system of combinations where many new things uh, could emerge um, so we are designing m multiple uh, options that uh, eventually the users could choose so this this obviously means thinking about design in a rule based way in in a um, not just draw one building and then get it executed type of way um, and and then all the all of these combinations like you also have to design the kit of parts uh, and the kit of parts is also variable uh, which is a lot more more, more work um, and and one of the things that we are trying to address is like we're educating the clients uh, in investing in in a small smaller set of machines and use local timber. Uh, the timber available there is like tropical pine. Um, and so they're now going through the process of certifying it, et cetera. And so you import um, uh, lower quality machines, robots, uh, which are not custom designed for timber, but they're significantly cheaper. Um, and they're slower than custom designed timber uh, machines, but like they're enabling uh, a smaller economy, right? And so, and it, it integrates better with like the existing carpentry skill and local labor, etc. And it also allows us as architects to know how much the building actually costs in this new system because we, it's, we, we can track the process of converting raw material into the finished product. Uh, and so it builds, builds our awareness better what the local supply chain can do and what the local skilled labor can do. And so in this sense, like we also built a configurator which incorporates all of this knowledge from the construction side or abstracts them. Um, and, and so when people choose their houses and also choose where they want their house, like the price is reflective of like these constraints and parameters, like the critical ones, not like every nut and bolt, but the major, um, major concerns are rep uh, represented plus they, they, they get to see it close enough like what they're gonna buy. So what they see is, even, is what they will eventually get, which is like a significant difference from the current way, like what people buy are drawings and what they get eventually is like, they have to imagine in their minds what that is. And so we are trying to reduce that gap. Um, so, um, and so they can, we are removing friction in the process of buying a house and, and we are also adding a lot of information uh, in, in, in this process. Uh, so it's educational, so in that sense, it's highly de-risking the process of buying or making one of your biggest investments um, and making it more transparent. And, and so as an example, uh, these are the choices that like the 10 buyers made. And as you can see, like most of them wanted the bookends because they don't want to, they want to have access to views and so on. And so what we did uh, is like we aggregated all their choices, decomposed them, and then change the design accordingly. So uh, we originally designed a closed stack and then because there lots of people wanted like uh, peripheral views, so we separated the buildings. So now the bottom one has like 88% uh, uh, of the units have like exterior view, whereas the top one, the middle ones didn't have exterior, uh, the side views. So several things like these, like we learned, and then we, in the second round, we added more floor plans, like uh, round two, it was requested that they needed a mezzanine or they required